Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the 40th annual Mr. Hockey Awards Banquet. I am Lauren Feldkamp. I'm the executive director of the Minnesota All Sports Alliance. Formerly the Minutemen since 1954, but now we're the Minnesota All Sports Alliance is our new name. And that's mainly because we do invite female members to be part of our group now, so we couldn't be called the Minutemen after all those years anymore. Today, we will be presenting the Mr. Hockey Award to the top high school senior hockey player and the Frank Brimzik Award to the top senior goaltender. These finalists and award winners are voted on by a panel of professional hockey scouts and other hockey experts in the state of Minnesota. So these hockey players have been selected as the top seniors in the state high school league, exhibiting the most talent and tradition of high school hockey in the nation. So congratulations, all you guys. We congratulate every one of you. We're absolutely honored to have you be at our banquet today. We wish you all the very best in your future endeavors, and we look forward to hearing from you guys a little bit later in the program individually. I'm gonna introduce these finalists before we enjoy our lunch, and then uh, all of these fine people at the other side of the table, you'll get to meet them as they come up and get involved in their portion of the banquet a little bit later. So, way down there at the end, I think we got Mr. Hagen Burroughs from Minnetonka, right? Awesome. <laughs> Next to him, Javon Moore from Minnetonka as well. <laughs> then Mr. Jackson Nevers from Edina High School. Carson Pilgrim, War Road High School. <laughs> Nolan Road, White Bear Lake High School. John Stout, Minnetonka High School. Gavin Eulenkamp, Chanhassen High School. Noah Ernest, Roseau High School. Reese Wallen, did I say that, Reese? Is that how you say that? Yeah, yeah, right. yeah good. <laughs> Reese Wallen, Wyzetta High School. <laughs> and Luis, or I'm sorry, Louis Wayman, Providence High School. <laughs> then our three finalists for the Frank Grimzik Award as the top goaltender in the state this year are Hunter Bauer from Minnetonka. Cam Hendrickson from Chanhassen. Uh oh, I didn't practice your name, AJ. AJ Riles? Yeah, perfect. Perfect, nice. Proctor High School. Sweet. Congratulations, you guys. Before we have our lunch, I'm going to bring one gentleman up here to tell you a little bit about Massa. My good friend Matt Williams is the president of the Minnesota All Sports Alliance. So, Matt, welcome. Educate these folks a little bit. Thank you, sir. Yes. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our 40th annual Mr. Hockey Banquet. It started uh, in 1985. We have uh, all these beautiful vi uh, pictures out there. We've captured every one of them. This is, um, you know, this is the state of hockey, and it's um, it's uh, it's an honor, privilege to be up here in front of you. But it's also um, just an absolute honor to be around all these great uh, players and and, um, and past and present. And so I um, I want to recognize a little bit about uh, the people who make up the great state of hockey. Let me just take this off. Go. There we go. All right. So um, I'd like to first uh, have Tom Chorsky be recognized. Tom, do you mind standing up? 40 years ago, this, or 40 years from now, this is what uh, Mr. Hockey looks like to you guys. <laughs> now, I'm not, I'm not a hockey guy. I think you can tell by the hair. 
But, um, you know, how we got started in this whole business of, of doing Mr. Hockey, um, you know, Lauren alluded to the 1954. We didn't have a pro team on the, on the map here in Minnesota. We were losing the Lakers. And, um, you know, the businessmen of Minneapolis and St. Uh, St. Paul got together and they formed the Minutemen. And together they sold a, a million, 1.2 million in bonds to bring, to build the Met Stadium. And when that happened, they got the Twins and the Vikings to come to Minnesota. And we had a, we had a state again that had some pro teams in it. Um, you know, not long uh, later, we had in, in '67, we had the we had the Stars come to town, '89 the Wolves, and in '99 the Lynx, and and uh, the Wild came back in 2000. And it's been, um, you know, when you think about it, we got the late start. Hockey got the late start in all sports, but. Uh, it is the state of hockey. They recognize that you know, internet, uh, nationally here, and and all the all the of all the U.S. born players in the in the NHL, Minnesota is the tops the list. The tops list in college, Minnesota is is known for this. So this is a, a privilege, you guys. You guys have uh, you're being honored. You're being honored with the greats, and we're going to share some of the greats that are here from the 40 years past a little bit later. Um, so when Massa got started with the, with the pro franchises uh, for the Twins and the Vikings, um, you know, they needed us in those days. And after a while, it got to be where, you know, the professional sports teams didn't really need, you know, the, um, you know, these clubs, these actions that were going to help them, pr um, you know, flourish in the, in, the, in the states they're in. And ultimately, what we ended up doing is shifting our, our focus to amateur athletes. And so in 1985, we, we, uh, we started the Mr. Hockey Banquet, as I alluded to. And ultimately, our whole mission is about giving back and doing goodwill through sports. And so my message really today, guys, is um, you know, as you go through your life and you look at people like Tom Chorsky or Mark Parrish, who are both involved in the Masa Group, they're volunteering their time. They're giving back to the community. They're, they're part of the grassroots organizations that help um, all, those, all the pro teams build from the ground up. And the Minnesota Wild have been amazing at supporting the Masa Group as our other professional teams here in Minnesota. Because they realize that you got to get a start somewhere. And all you parents and all you coaches and family members, you know what it's like to start off those kids when it comes down to getting them into hockey and all the time and effort that goes into it. And uh, that's giving back. And it's, um, you know, really hopefully you guys will take that torch, you know, uh, through the years and come back to, to this banquet and share your stories and, um, and really continue the, the great tradition of the Mr. Hockey Banquet. And so if, as we look to, to give back to the organization, I want to just recognize a few people and thank them for all the, all the efforts and, and all the contributions that they've made to make this event even possible. And I want to start with uh, the Minnesota Wild and Matt Maka and Wayne Peterson. Uh, you know, amazing guys. You're going to hear a little bit about, about, uh, from both of them today. And, and Billy Guerin, our, the general, general manager. Their continuity and uh, stability in helping support us in our foundation, uh, which is, is really predicated on giving back to youth hockey. We have the Dynamites. We have other, uh, other uh, charitable contributions like Boulder Options. We're really trying to keep diversity, equity, and inclusion and, and having you know, kids have the opportunity to play sports, not just hockey, but all sports. And that's what the Minnesota I mean, so All Sports Alliance is about. And um, so in addition to thinking the wild, I really want to have, um, you know, the, the, I'm excited to hear from everybody here at the, at the table. And, and I just really want to thank them for their contribution and the volunteering their time. Um, and uh, before I get to the players, I just want to uh, recognize the Minnesota All Sports Alliance. If you don't mind standing up and, and being recognized by this group, I really appreciate it. Uh, Lauren, you can stand up as well. But we've got Lauren here, Marty Mielli, who is our uh, committee chair. Marty, you mind up? Uh, we've got, uh, you know, Nicole Padgett. We've got Alex Odette, uh, Tom and Chorsky and Mark Pierce, I mentioned. Um, we, and we have, uh, you know, Eric over there on the video. Thank you, Eric and uh, many, many other members that are in the group. And, and I just really want to take a second to appreciate all those volunteers who gave back to help today become possible. As I'm proud to lead the Minnesota Sports Alliance in the future, um, you know, as Lauren said, we have women part of the group now, but we also, um, you know, we have a future of, of helping, you know, kids and uh, there's great stories to be had and and we welcome you to come and learn a little bit more about us at the at the front table but uh, at this point you guys 
Great, great, uh, great effort. I know that this caps your high school hockey careers. I wish you the best of luck all the way through the, the uh, next phase of your life and the, and the phases after that. And uh, don't stop to think about and reflect a little bit in, in, in how you can give back and, and recognize the good people that helped us all get there. And uh, hopefully that's uh, something we can all take away from. Thank you, everyone. Enjoy your day. Matt and I have been on the leadership team together for about 17, 18 years now for the Minutemen slash Minnesota All Sports Alliance. Matt owns a company called Exhibit Partners in Maple Grove. He and his team have really, really supported the growth of this organization and is becoming what Matt and I have always wanted it to become. So we're, we're very thankful to all the people at Exhibit Partners too. We're gonna eat our lunch pretty soon. I'm gonna ask you to uh, join me in a short invocation in a minute, and then they'll serve our food. But during the time you eat, um, Brian Bonin will introduce all of the VIP alumni guests that have joined us today, and thank you all for being here again, all you guys. It's awesome that you've taken some time to be here. And uh, Brian will introduce you guys real quick. We'd like after the banquet's done, all these guys to get a, at that photo table and we'll get a photo of the group of them and then we'll give their families two or three or four minutes to take some shots and then we'll get an alumni photo at the say, at, afterwards as well. So I hope that all you guys get to meet all these guys and vice versa at that point. So once again, thanks for joining us and we're very excited to have you all back. Mark Parrish and Tom Chorsky, but especially Matt Kowalska, whose mother wants him to be known as Matthew Kowalska, so I'll say Matthew Kowalska now, uh, invited all you guys, and Matthew could not be here today. He's a good dad. He's at his son's last hockey game today in Fergus Falls, so Matthew Kowalska couldn't make it, but we owe him a big debt of gratitude for helping organize all you guys and inviting you and getting you all here. So thank you so much to Matthew Kowalska, who's not here. So join me in a short invocation, and they're going to serve your meals. Then we'll have some applause opportunities while you eat. So just remember that as we go. Okay, God, thank you for the blessings in our lives and the freedom that we have to live in this country. Bless this gathering today. Thank you for the ability to gather and celebrate our achievements in this world we live in. Bless this food we're about to share. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay, enjoy your meal. They're going to start serving you some food now. I'm going to, before we get Brian up here, I want to, enter, I want to recognize a couple other people. Somewhere out there is a table of the Minnesota Wild. So Roger Godin, are you, are you here? Can you stand up, Roger? Roger Godin is a curator for the Minnesota Wild. He's great at hockey. He knows everything about hockey. Whichever of you guys wins the Mr. Hockey Award today, you and your parents need to connect with Roger Godin before you leave here today, because he'll get a jersey and put a display up in Excel Center recognizing you as a Mr. Hockey Award winner. So is Larry McMahon at that same table? Larry, can you stand up, please? Larry is my good friend. Thank you, sir. Do you want to get on your chair or not? Larry did so much to create Mr. Hockey all these years ago and helped the Minutemen all these years ago. He sponsored, he got achieved sponsorship in organization. He just has been a mentor to Matt and I. He was the president of the Minutemen when I took over as president 16, 18 years ago, something like that. And that was about his third stint of being president of either the St. Paul Minutemen or the combined group of Minnesota Minutemen. Larry, thank you so much for all you did, all you do, and all you did do. And I forgot to note, to, to note when, when Roger Gordon was standing up that earlier this year, he was bestowed an award that is called the Jim Fullerton Award from the American Hockey Coaches Association. So we want to recognize Roger for that. Congratulations, sir. Well done. We need to recognize Justin's Ring Company. Once again, whoever wins the Mr. Hockey Award today will connect with you 
Jostens will help, you will help Jostens design your own ring, and, and th that ring will be shipped to us sometime in a few months, and we're gonna meet with you and do some photos as we present you to that ring. And the Hobie Baker Award is here. Who's our guys? I've got your names here too. I'm sorry, I don't, don't have the names with me, but you Hobie Baker guys stand up please because we have the Hobie Baker Award here today. Wally and I forget your name, I'll get it later. Thank you for doing that. And while we're at that point, let's have uh, maybe Brian Bonner stand up. And is Marty Sertich here? I think so. Can Marty, can you stand up? Awesome. These two guys won the Mr. Hockey Award and won the, the Hobie Baker Award. The only two guys in history to do that, and we're so proud of that. And so I know you guys are too with the Hobie. So thank you for being here today. Okay. I think we're at the point now that I can ask Brian Bonner to come up here. Brian, of course, won the Mr. Hockey Award and the Hobie Baker Award, and he's going to help us today get through this program. Brian, thank you for being here, sir. Thank you very much. All right. They're going to keep. So often we try to uh, invite back past finalists, award winners to, to Mr. Hockey. So I'm going to quickly go through the, the list, and then uh, maybe we'll have the fellas stand at, at the end of, of this uh, announcement, just to make sure we keep things moving along. I'm going to start with Tommy Chorsky, back in 1985, the first Mr. Hockey winner. We got Tommy Quinlan, finalist in 1986. Joe Dedzik, Mr. Hockey in 1990. Tom Nevers, a finalist in 1990. Mark Parrish, a finalist in 1995. Peter Rode, a finalist in 1995. Uh, Winnie Brote, 1996, Miss Hockey. Eric Westrom, a finalist in 1997. Eric Wendell, a finalist in 1998. Pat O'Leary, uh, a finalist in 1998. Jeff Tafe, Mr. Hockey, 1999. Maddie Kowalska, a, finest, a finalist in 1999. Dan Welch, a finalist in 2000. Matt Hendricks, a finalist in 2000. Paul Martin, Mr. Hockey, 2000. Aaron Johnson, a finalist in 2001. Marty Sertich, Mr. Hockey, 2001. Mike Erickson, a finalist in 2001. Tim Hambly, a finalist in 2001. Gino Geyer, Mr. Hockey, 2002. Ben Gordon, a finalist in 2003. Matt Lundin, uh, the top goaltender, 2004. And Brian Lee, uh, Mr. Hockey, 2005. And one of the cool things about this too is these young fellows don't get a chance, but so many players that have come through Minnesota, so many players that are up for this award, you know, they're still playing hockey. Uh, a lot of opportunity out there. We, we push through a lot of really, really good hockey players through the state of Minnesota. It's a team game. We give indiv you know, individual awards at the end. But I think for all these players that are sitting up here, all the players that are here in attendance, we all know it takes a team. It takes all your teammates to push you day in, day out. So in the end, it truly is a, a, a team game, a team award. And it's super cool when you can see some of the faces that are up here on the, on the screen and what they're doing today. They came through this uh, Mr. Hockey process, so many of them, you know, up for the award. And as you can see, uh, a lot of highlights there up on the screen. Congrats, boys. Enjoy your lunch. We'll see you back up here in a little bit. Thank you, Brian. Thank you guys again. I think, <clears throat> excuse me, I think our printer got a couple dates wrong. I, Danny Welch, I know that you were the same year as Jeff Tafe, so it's wrong in the program. I apologize for that. And when he brought, when he brought, I think is how you say that. Thank you for being here. 
Winnie was the first ever Ms. Hockey Award. That's an award that the Minutemen created back in 1996. We didn't feel we had enough people to ju do justice to that committee. So after that year, we gave that award away to Let's Play Hockey Magazine, and they've done an outstanding job with it ever since. But I think Winnie's here today. Winnie was at our head table in 1996 as a recipient of the first ever Ms. Hockey Award that we helped to create, so we're proud of that as well. Uh, Brian Lee couldn't make it at the last minute today. He had a family, something happened, and maybe a couple other guys, but we appreciate all you guys being here. Enjoy your lunch. After we uh, have lunch, we'll get Katie Storm up here. We'll get through the rest of the program, and we'll go from there. Enjoy.
Baker Award or Wally Olson and Chuck Rainey. Did I say that right, guys? Thank you again for being here. Awesome. The other way that we're celebrating the 40 years of Mr. Hockey is we had this book printed that's got all the programs from all the way 1985 up through this year. We uh, sell these for $25 a piece. You got an opportunity to buy them at the registration table, but if anybody wants to buy them throughout the banquet, go to the back and see Alex or Nicole, and uh, we can sell you one of those books if you want one. Now, you've seen Katie Storm on television quite a bit. She was on Hockey Day in Minnesota. She's been on Minnesota Twins post game regularly. She's been on Timberwolves. She's starting out to be on the wild more and more and more. She's a great girl, and we appreciate her assistance. We're going to bring her up here now, Katie Storm, and she'll conduct the rest of the program and tell you a little bit more about herself as well. Thank you. That was a very kind introduction. Hi, everyone. I'm Katie Storm, as Lauren mentioned. I, for the last few years, have worked at Valley Sports North as a host and a reporter covering um, the major sports teams here in the Twin Cities. It's been fun. Uh, Minnesota girl, grew up as a Delano Tiger, and the state hockey tournament, most importantly, was a tradition in our household. I am the only girl in the middle of six boys, so all of us would pile up in the van, get a hotel room downtown here, and be walking back and forth to the XL Center. It was a very fun time, and uh, even as an adult now, fun to see the tradition continue for so many families and watch the talent continue to grow. So speaking of fun, so happy to be here today to help recognize these amazing hockey players and people, most importantly. Um, I'm going to get to ask the fun questions, get to know them a little bit more. And they've been briefed on that, so I think they're ready for some fun questions. Uh, and then, yeah, we'll get to know them. We'll have some trivia later on, too. And of course, we'll be announcing some uh, award winners. So before we get started on all the trivia, I would like to welcome Heather Weems to the podium. Heather is the current commissioner of the National Collegiate Hockey Conference. Thank you, Katie. As a point of information, I was actually part of the recruiting process to get Katie to come to St. Cloud State University with Bernie Omen back a few years ago when, when she came to our mass, mass communications um, program. Good afternoon. As commissioner of the National Collegiate Hockey Conference, I'm honored to be here this afternoon to celebrate the Mr. Hockey nominees and as a culmination to one of the best traditions in, on the ice, the Minnesota State High School Tournament. Thank you to the Minnesota All Sport Alliance for inviting me to attend. For the majority of you who don't know me, I actually grew up amongst the farm fields of Iowa. I played basketball. I'm actually following my, my University of Iowa team right now. Um, I, I played volleyball, softball, and ran track. I took up rowing at the University of Iowa. The first time I saw the Des Moines Bucks play, I was a senior in high school, and I was trying to figure out who the cute boys were. It was not until I was in graduate school at the University of Denver that I got hooked on hockey. I started my career in student athlete support services at DU. My office was just down the hallway from legendary head coach George, George Gwazdecki. I became friends with his staff, Seth Appert, Steve Miller, Derek Lalonde. And I served as an academic advisor and often life counselor to dozens of players over my 10 years at Denver. After a three-year stint at Drake University, I was named Director of Athletics at St. Cloud State University, a couple of, um, a couple of a school that a couple of you on this side of me know well. I was front row to SCSU's first trip to the Frozen Four, and I was on the glass when they played in the championship game a few years back. I am now in my second year as the Commissioner of the NCHC, and am fortunate to lead the best conference in, co in college men's hockey but I am even more privileged to work with some of the best coaches, administrators, and hockey minds in the country. I also have four sons, two now in, now in college, one in high school and one in middle school in St. Cloud. All identify as hockey players and have played against some of you to honor today and respect you as competitors and peers. As you prepare for your junior and college hockey careers, I thought I might share a few things I love about the college experience and that I've observed over my over 20 years working closely with some of the best players, coaches, and people. 
Number one, the most important decision you make is who you surround yourself with. Your coaches and brothers in the locker room, the support staff in strength, equipment, and athletic training, the academic staff guiding your classes and access to resources, they all care about you. Be all in on the culture. At no other time will there be so many people interested in helping you develop as a player. Be patient. You are all entering the next phase as elite players, but at each new phase, you run into players with more experience, more maturity, better skills. Give yourself time to develop. Trust the coaches and their background and knowledge. Put in the time. While I support the transfer portal in providing a level of flexibility that is fair to players, it is not the answer to every problem. Sometimes it just takes hard work, repetition, and time. Be patient. Com number three, communicate, ask for help. At no other time in history have we had more access to information at our fingertips, the cell phones that we carry every day. But information is not wisdom. Wisdom comes only through experience. If you are struggling in classes, on the ice, with mental health, ask for help. I spent way too much time in college banging my head on the wall thinking if I just read the chemistry chapter one more time it would make sense. Or if I ran a few more miles or rode a few more meters, it would all come together. Have the courage to know you don't know it all. Which goes back to number one. Surround yourself with people who want to help you be better. Last night as the final AA championship was taking place at the Excel, I was watching multiple screens as our NCHC teams finished their regular seasons. It was a weekend of upsets and tight finishes. The parity in college hockey and the NCHC is absolutely mind-blowing right now. There is so much talent and depth in our league, and on any given night, the right mindset, hard-nosed play, and a few good bounces, it's anyone's game. As of this morning, with conference playoffs beginning next weekend, we have six of our eight conference teams ranked in the top 16 in the pairwise. The NCHC could advance as many as five or six teams to the NCAA tournament. Our players and coaches know that every weekend is just another in the NCHC gauntlet, and they must prepare and practice for success. More than any other league, we have found success at the national level because our teams have had to fight every weekend for position. They practice in the heat of the moment and are prepared for playoffs when they come. And they believe they can beat any, anyone in the country. It is not cockiness, it's simply confidence in their coaches, their teammates, and the training process. Hagen, Javon, Jackson, Carson, Nolan, John, Gavin, Noah, Reese, Louie. You have represented your teams well. You have set yourselves apart in the best hockey development system in the country. You have earned the respect of college coaches at the next level. Congratulations. Enjoy the honors. And then know this is only the beginning. Surround yourself with good people and buy in. Be patient in your development and work hard. Communicate and ask for help. Best wishes in the next phase and always res represent the name on the front and the back of the jersey with honor. Congratulations, Mr. Hockey Class of 2024. Thank you, Heather. All right, well now um, I would like to welcome everybody up here and we're gonna have, like I said, some trivia uh, later on and I'm gonna start by asking some icebreaker, I don't know, just fun questions. So firstly, this is fun because I'm gonna have the entire Minnetonka group up here. So I will announce each individual at a time, we can recognize them and then we'll eventually get the whole group. So I'll start firstly with Hagen Burroughs of Minnetonka. Come on up. <laughs> and then you'll get a picture here with Matt. You want me in it? Sure. Oh, okay, I'm on it. <laughs> oh, okay, are you all prepared? <laughs> Next up, Javon Moore of Minnetonka. Oh, and sorry, Hagen, I'm going to have you stay up here, too, eventually. We're not done with you. Great. John Stout of Minnetonka. All right.
right, and last but certainly not least, Hunter Bauer of Minnetonka. <laughs> All right, who to start with here? Hmm, firstly, let's see. Yeah, Hagen, I'll start with you. And I, these work, right? Do you all? Yeah, I think they work. One? Hopefully. Maybe not. Does this come off? Okay. Hagen, let's see. What would your personal goal song be if you could have one? <laughs> Put me on the spot. Um, um, probably Can't Stop Dancing. Yeah. I don't know what's by. Just good song. Yeah. What about you, Javon? Who would your uh, personal goal song be? 22 by Taylor Swift. Year after year, there's a lot of Taylor Swift love. I love it. All right. Who would your personal so goal song be? What would it be? Uh, probably like for the first time in forever, because I don't really score very often. <laughs> different for you, but what would your just personal song be driving to the rink to get ready for a game? Oh, I like country, so probably like Revival by Zach Bryan. That's good. That's a good mixture. Yeah, that was great. All right, we're not done yet, though. I'm going to go down the other way now. Uh, we know with hockey and a lot of sports, pregame rituals are a big thing. What is maybe a unique pregame ritual that you do, whether on or off the ice? Uh, I drink a Coke before every game. Really? Just one Coke? Yeah. Okay. Just to wake up. Just to wake up. I like that. And it's not, it's a regular Coca-Cola. Coke. Okay. What about you? Any pregame rituals? Yeah, I norm attack for 35 minutes. Okay. That's pretty common, I would yeah. think. Pregame ritual. Uh, I don't like to have people watch me do my stick. So where do you go? Do you just have to go some private room or? Yeah, I find a spot where no one is, so. Okay. That might get a little tricky when you're at different rinks, right? For sure. You have to get creative, for sure. All right, do you not like to have people watch you tape your stick? No, I don't really care. But I'd say um, for me, I don't know if I'll still go with it, but at Minnetonka, I was always the last guy on our team off the ice after warm-ups. I like that. I like that. Well, this is the last one, but it's a little bit more, of course, off the ice. Favorite subject in school? Um, I'd have to go social studies. Okay. Uh, I would say digital photo. Digital photo? That is also very, cr I like that. Okay, what about you? Intro to chess. <laughs> what are they teaching these days? Chess, that's great, I love that. What about you? Physics. Physics, okay. That's one that I, I definitely was aware of when I was in high school. Okay, um, that's the, the wrap for the trivia questions. Now I um, would like to know if there's anybody that you would like, th like to thank for getting you to where you are today. Obviously, the teammates up here and the teammates out there, um, I couldn't have done it without you. Then uh, my coach, Sean Goldsworthy, and uh, Mike Johnson, the goalie coach, I really couldn't have done it without them, so yeah. Shout out to them, and what are your plans for next year? Uh, I'm playing with the Dolphin Kings in the uh, Manitoba Junior Hockey League. Love it. Good luck. And uh, anybody you would like to thank? Uh, yeah, I'd like to thank my teammates and coaches, like he just said, and then my family as well for all they've done for me. What are your plans for next year? Uh, play for the Madison Capitals in the USHL. Good luck, good luck. Who would you like to thank? Uh, I would like to thank my teammates, uh, family, for all the time they put into me, and then my coaches, uh, making me better each and every day. Plans for next year? Put Sioux Falls in the USHL. Great, great. Who would you like to thank? Yeah, just my parents, uh, Christy and Brent. I mean, they've supported me through everything. Um, and then the coaching staff, uh, Steve Aronson, his forward coach, he's helped me a lot throughout the years. And then obviously Goldsworthy is, is the best. And uh, obviously just the teammates, specifically uh, Gavin Gary and this guy right here for uh, being with me the past three years and putting up with me. So it's been a lot of fun. Love it. And what are your plans for next year? Uh, I'll be playing in Sioux City in USHL. Great. Well, good luck to all of you on your hockey, also chess, and taping your stick in private rooms. Thank you. Let's give it up for the Minnetonka boys. Those superstitions, they always get more and more unique. Pre-game rituals. All right, well, that was our big Minnetonka group. Now I'd like to welcome the Edina boy, Jackson Nevers, to the stage.
which one was working? Okay, here we go. I'm gonna hide my questions so you can't see them. All right. What are your hobbies outside of hockey? Uh, play Rainbow Six Siege with John Warpinski. Please expand. It's a video game on Xbox. Uh, I like to kill him in it, but. Okay. All right. I like it. Um, what is the coolest goal you've ever scored? Um, wow. I don't know. I'm, I'm just going to go with Stouty, uh, picking him on the blue line when we played Tonka, and then scoring. <laughs> Who has had the biggest impact on your hockey career? Uh, I'm going to say my dad and my older brother, for sure. Um, my brother kind of guides me when I need it and, uh, you know, lets me do my own thing at the same time. And that kind of ties into the next question. Is there anyone you would like to thank? Yeah, I'd like to thank the boys, you know, Brothers for Life. Uh, you know, I wouldn't be up here without them. I'd like to thank my parents for uh, letting me pursue my dreams and obviously the coaches, you know, that the amount of time they take out of their day for us boys and it's just so special to us. What are your plans for next year? Uh, play for the Waterloo Blackhawks in the USHL. All right, Jackson, thank you. Good luck. Yeah. Next up, Carson Pilgrim from Warroad. All right. Let's see. I would like to start firstly with an NHL player that you like to resemble your game after. Um, I'd have to say Mitch Marner. He's a playmaker, so I kind of just watch him and see what he does when he plays with Matthews, and I try to be just like him. So. That's great. And any pregame rituals that are unique for you? Um, no, I just kind of like to keep it simple. Just um, I'm usually the last one to put my jersey on and off before or after everyone else so that's great and a uh, personal goal song what would your goal song be any taylor swift for you no probably just some country um probably sarah's place by zach bryan i like it um who would you like to thank um obviously my parents you know they got me to the point or to where i am today so i couldn't have done it without you guys um also my line mates um taven and murray i've been playing with murray since we were probably seven or eight years old. And then, you know, the coaching staff, even though I'm related to half of them. Um, <laughs> I'd like to thank them too, because they're the best coaches I could ask for. And uh, yeah, just like to say thanks to them. Yeah. And what are your plans for next year? Uh, play for the Tri-City Storm in the USHL. All right, good luck. Thank you. Next, I'd like to welcome Nolan Road of White Bear Lake. I'm trying to like switch these up. I know you've had some time to think about answers to some of the past ones, but they're still fun. Um, what is your favorite subject in school? Any chess, physics? Nah, I really like sculpture. <laughs> that's, a that's an actual class. Yeah, sculpture. Or like cer ceramics is fun, too. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's ceramics. That's good. And you're good at it, I'm sure. I'm all right, yeah. What's the coolest thing that you've made from that class? Uh, I made like a little uh, clay ball of uh, Chewbacca one time. It was pretty sweet. Okay. <laughs> that's very, very unique. I like it. Um, if you could just keep one phone app on your phone, what would it be? Uh, TikTok for sure. Okay. okay, that's good. What is like, what's your algorithm? What's mostly on your TikTok? Like unique hockey goals and any, any golf or anything? Probably some just funny memes and stuff. Okay. Just gets me laughing throughout the day, so yeah. People are funny out there for sure. Um, and lastly, let's see, what are some of your hobbies outside of hockey? Uh, I'd say last summer I picked up pickleball and uh, I like to play that a lot, so yeah. Sure, it gets competitive for sure. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, anybody that you would like to thank for getting you to this point? Uh, my parents, first of all, for uh, just giving me the rank for my the last uh, last ten years of my life. 
my teammates out there. I'd like to shout those guys out. They, I wouldn't be there without them. So, uh, and then my older brother for being probably my mentor uh, my whole life. What are your plans for next year? I'll play with the Tri-City Storm in the USHL. All right, good luck. Thank you. <laughs> Nolan Road. All right, next, I'm going to have both of the Chanhassen boys up at the same time. Gavin Eulenkamp and Cam Hendrickson. All right, Gavin, yep. start with you. What would your personal goal song be if you could choose one? Just one. Um, probably Party in the USA or something like that. Like good Mo Miley Cyrus, that's kind of an older one. Yeah. I like it. Um, for you, what would your song be to get you ready for a game? What's your favorite? Get you ready for a game? You're up. Big Morgan Wallen guy. Okay. Yeah. Anything from him works. Anything. Anything. No specific song. Okay. Favorite subject in school? I want to hear it from both of you. These subjects have been very unique, so I'm excited to hear what you have to say. Personal wellness. Personal wellness. What goes into that class? Is it just kind of like health? It's just like gym class, yeah, pretty oh. much online. Gym class. <laughs> online gym class is a thing. Yep. So yep. You just send in videos of exercises? I just like write. I had practice today, pretty much, so. That kind of works for you, I, I suppose. Personal wellness for you, too? Uh, photo and study hall. OK. Yeah. OK. You have two of them, not just one. Or is it in one class, photo and study hall? Yeah, it's two classes. OK. Y you like photography, though? Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Any hobbies that might answer this next one? Any hobbies outside of hockey? Golf. I'm not very good, but golf. You have passion for it. You're yeah. Photography for you, or what other hobbies? No, golfing and going to the gym and video games, probably. <laughs> I like it. OK, so uh, next, anybody that you would like to thank? Um, my family, and then um, my teammates over there, and my line mates, Jack Christ and Caden Lee, and then the coaching staff we got over there. They've been awesome. Okay. Who would you like to thank? Yeah, my parents, Ben and Tanya, all the boys over there, especially G. Mill and Adderson, um, the whole coaching staff, especially Jensen, Drew Fielding. They really helped me a lot this year. And plans for next year? Madison Capitals, USHL. Good luck. Junior somewhere okay. to be determined. OK, good luck. Congratulations, guys. Thank you. <laughs> Chan Hassan. <laughs> next up from Rozo, Noah Erness. If you could keep just one phone app on your phone, what would it be? Probably Instagram. Okay. Yeah. Instagram's good. Um, what would your post personal goal song be? Uh, so, some by Rihanna, probably. Rihanna, I love this. Th no particular song, just kind of, uh -huh. she gets you fired up for games. Rihanna. Probably Run This Town, something like that. That's a good one. That would be a good goal song. Um, what are your hobbies outside of hockey? Uh, I like baseball and golf. Uh, I like to fish and hunt too. So, are you good at golf? Pretty mid, but sometimes kind of depends on the day. You just enjoy it. It's good. Yeah. It's fun. Fun pastime. Well, uh, what is the coolest goal that you have ever scored? Probably some against Warroad. <laughs> it's a valid answer. I'm sure. I'm sure. Uh, is there anybody you would like to thank? Uh, my mom, dad, uh, all my family sitting over there. The boys. Uh, coaches and just the community of Rozo. Couldn't do it without them. Yeah. Uh, what are your plans for next year? Uh, playing the BCHL or USHL. All right. Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> Noah. <laughs> Reese Wallen of YZ. Reese, come on up. Reese, any pregame rituals that you do? Can you have people watch you tape your stick at all? No, I'm 
fine with that. But uh, me and uh, Finn De, De St. Hubert, we uh, pinch each other as hard as we can before a game just to wake us up. Again, that's just very unique. My biggest question is, when did this start? It was just one day you said, let's do this every game? Yeah, I mean, just came out of nowhere, and he pinched me as hard as he could, and it just took off from there. Okay. Okay. That's good. Whatever, whatever gets you fired up for a game. Um, what are your hobbies outside of hockey? Um, play Xbox sometimes and golf. Not really. Nothing really other than that. That's good. Uh, favorite subject in school? Probably a unified PE. I like helping out with the kids and stuff. That's good. That's good. Uh, anybody you would like to thank? Um, I'd like to thank my family up front right there, and then also my coaches in the back. They've helped me a lot, and as well as my teammates. I couldn't be here without you guys, so thank you. And what are your plans for next year? Um, hopefully play in the USHL for Tri-City next year. All right. Good luck. Thank Congrats. You. Yeah. Lewis Wayman of Providence. Lewis. Congrats. <laughs> Just because these really haven't gotten old, what is your favorite subject in school? Um, either study hall or computer science. Okay, those are good. Uh, if you had to keep one phone app on your phone, what would it be? Uh, Twitter. Yeah. Otherwise known as X now, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Changed, I guess. Personal goal song for you? Um, I'd say Hips Don't Live, Shakira. <laughs> I love the throwbacks. These songs just stay relevant. That's great. I mean, yeah, that's a great song. Um, who has had the biggest impact on your hockey career? Um, I'd probably say my mom. She's always believed in me. And that leads me to my next question. Who would you like to thank? Uh, yeah, definitely my mom, my parents, um, God. Uh, the whole Providence Academy coaching staff and program. It's really come a long way since I joined. And what are your plans for next year? Um, undecided. Okay, good luck. Good luck. Thank you. Congrats. Looks like just one left. AJ Railtz of Proctor. Come on up. <laughs> Okay, let's see. Um, any NHL player that you have modeled your game after? Um, probably Jake Onger, Dallas Stars. Yeah, Minnesota kid. Um, what is the most memorable game that you've played in? Oh, the most memorable? Uh, probably just uh, one of our games against Hermantown growing up, so yeah. That's pretty good. Um, what... Who would you like to thank for getting you to this point? Uh, first, I'd like to thank God. Um, I'd like to thank all my coaches that are here and uh, all my teammates uh, here and back home. I'd like to thank my parents and both my brothers and, uh, yeah, all my friends that have uh, helped me pursue my dreams. Favorite subject in school? Um, probably UFIT from my head coach. He teaches it, so, yeah. yeah. To see a lot of them. That's always fun, huh? Yeah, yeah. What are your plans for next year? Uh, probably play somewhere or play for uh, the Kenai River Brown Bears in the NHL. All right. They love it. Thanks. Congrats. <laughs> the trivia, I think. I haven't been able to find this one. First off, I'd like to give a, another round of applause for all these answers. That was, that was unique, creative, fun. You guys are great. All right, guys, I'm going to get to do the trivia questions for you. I hope this wireless mic works. I'll just come down and ask you a couple questions. Hagen Burroughs, first of all, do you know which two varsity players that were brothers were Mr. Hockey Award finalists in 2008 and 2010? Gardeners. Yep, awesome. Max and Jake, yep, yep, awesome. So there's nine other Minnetonka finalists, previous finalists. Can you name three of them at all? Can I use the Gardeners or no? Okay, the Gardeners, uh, Justin Hull, um, yep. oh, what, what's his name? He's on the wild now. <laughs> Vinny Letary, was he one? He was not. Good call, he was not. Uh, yeah. Well, you got your three, yeah, though. That's, that's, yeah. You did good. 
you got guys like Tommy Vanelli and Luke Lo Lohai and oh, so yeah, on like right. that. So, all right, awesome. Okay, yeah. now, Javon, you're also from Minnetonka. Do you know which, which Mr. Hockey Award finalist coached the Minnetonka varsity team? Stevie Aronson? No. Brian Urich was a 1995 oh, yeah. finalist and was head coach, right? Yep. Okay. Now, here's a little trick question. Which Minnetonka Mr. Hockey finalist were brothers? I, that's giving it away, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, but they had a sister that became a Ms. Lacrosse Award finalist as well. Gardner's. Gardner's as well. <laughs> so that ho the, the, they're in our hockey hall of, or our, our Massa Hall of Fame too. Okay, now, Jackson Devers from Edina. Who was the first ever Mr. Hockey Award finalist from Edina? Tom Tversky. That's wrong. <laughs> nice, uh, nice effort, though. He was from Southwest. The answer is uh, this guy named Tom Nevers in 1990. <laughs> Tom, where are you at? Stand up, please. Where are you at, Tom? Where are you at? There we go. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you know that guy. Yeah, I do. I get to, I, this, this year, I talked about him when Mason was here. I asked him this year if I could talk about him. That year I didn't. But he's a guy that played hockey and baseball. You signed a big baseball contract, played minor league ball, paid his own way back to the university during the off season and played hockey with him after that. So he's a special dude and, and I'm just glad I got to ask him this year if I could talk about him. Okay, Jackson, name, name the only Mr. Hockey Award winner from Edina. Sammy Walker. Sammy Walker is correct, okay. One more. Which two brothers were both Mr. Hockey Award finalists from Edina? Me and Mason. Me and my brother. Oh, that's right. Good. That's a trick question. I forgot the answer. The other answer is uh, Marshall Everson and Max Everson in 2009-2011. But yeah, you and your brother Mason was here how many years ago? Three years 20, ago? 2019. 2019. Awesome. Good job. Thank you. You tricked me. I like it. I like it. <laughs> Next page for Mr. Carson Pilgrim. <laughs> Name the only two Mr. Hockey Award winners from War Road High School. Uh, Larry O.M. and Jason Chagabee. Nice, 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 nice. And tell us, tell us all, what's your relationship with Jason Chagabee? Uh, he's my uncle. <laughs> Absolutely, that's love it, love it, love it. Okay, one more. Name one of the two War Road Mr. Hockey finalists playing in the NHL right now. Or name them both if you can. Uh, Brock Nelson. Yep. And TJ. TJ Yoshi. Awesome. Nice work. Nice work. All right. Nolan Road. Which White Bear Lake Mr. Hockey Award finalist now broadcast wild hockey on Valley Sports? Brian Carter. Brian Carter is correct. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, there were nine. There have been nine Mr. Hockey Award finalists from White Bear Lake. Can you name like three of those guys? Uh, Ryan Carter, my dad, Tim Hambly, and me. Awesome. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Tim Hambly is coaching. Is uh, Tim's here? Uh, is one of our alumni? Tim, where you at? Stand up, sir. Love it, like that. And Peter Rode was a finalist in 1995. Thank you, sir. Glad to have you here. Okay. Do you know one of the two Frank Brimzik Award winners from White Bear Lake at all, or do you not? No clue. <laughs> How do I say, Eric Arneo, is that his name? In 2001, or John Anderson in 2003. Okay, good job. <laughs> John Stout. Which Minnetonka Mr. Hockey Award finalist played hockey for the Gophers? And this, there might be more than the correct than the answer I put down. Uh, wait, am I going for a number or a name? A name. Oh, uh, I have no clue. Okay. Well, the one I remember is Justin Hole. Get, okay. Did the, the, the wireless mics haven't been, is that one working? Yeah, I think so. Really? Yeah. Awesome. Okay, see if that works. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> 
One extra credit question. This is, this is not, okay, this is not um, Minnetonka related, but a Mr. Ho extra credit. Which Mr. Hockey Award winner, please, right now for the Nashville Predators? Is this work? That's Novak? working. Novak? That's Tommy Novak? No. The answer, I believe, is Ryan, Ryan McDonough. McDonough. Yep. yep 2007 Creighton Durham Hall. So since you're the third Minnetonka guy, I just had to get that extra credit one in there for you. Okay, Gavin, Eulen Camp from Chan Hassan. Congrats to you and Cam on being the first ever Mr. Hockey Award finalist and Frank Brimzik from Chan Hassan. So since there are no Chan Hassan related questions, you guys get some extra credit questions too. See if you can name one of the two schools that swept the Mr. Hockey Award and the Frank Grimzik Award in the same year. Warroad. Warroad did it last year, nice, nice job. And the Grand Rapids did it in 2014 with Avery Peterson and Hunter Shepard as well. Good job. Okay, which Mr. Hockey Award finalist is currently on the Minnesota Wild team? I'll give you a clue, he's from Grand Rapids, Minnesota. Oligoski? You are correct. Nice work. <laughs> With an assist from Noah Ernest, I believe, from Roseau. Noah named one of the two Mr. Hockey Award winners from Roseau. Ernest. Yep. And do you know the other one, too? Because he's more recent. Oh, Max Tran. Yep. Max Tran, 1922. Yep. And do you know three, <laughs> there's, about, there's about 10 or 12 other Roseau finalists that have been Mr. Ho Roseau players, Mr. Hockey, do you know three of those? Uh, Bill Lund, Brian Lumbaum, uh, Derek Bufflin, Trevor Hammer, yeah. Aaron Hoogland. Yeah. That's four, and you've got the old guys too. Awesome, you know your history. And keep going. Yeah, <laughs> keep going, keep going. Name more if you want to. Uh, Zach Yon, I say him. Yeah. Uh, going to Brimzik. Uh, Jake Brown. Yep, yep. And and who's the who's the Rosal guy that scored the uh, winning goal last night for the Gophers? Aaron Hugo. There you go. Absolutely. Nice work. Okay. Pass that mic down. Reese Wallen from Moisetta. What year and from what school was your coach Pat O'Leary a Mr. Hockey finalist? Do you know that answer? Oh uh, yeah, it's in the book. Uh, 19, <laughs> 1998 Armstrong. Yeah, nice work. And there's eight previous Mr. Hockey winners from Wyzetta. Can you name three of those by chance? Colin Schmidt. Uh, that's it. I don't, I don't know any others. Yeah. Well, some of the old guys are Mike Moeller in 90, Chad Erickson in 88, Tim Herbert in 93, so on and so forth. So, okay, good job. Thanks. Okay, pass that mic down to Mr. Lewis Waman from Providence. <laughs> Wayman. <laughs> Wayman. Wayman, sorry man, sorry. So congrats to you on being the first ever finalist from Providence too. So you get extra credit questions too. Which Mr. Hockey finalists are now teammates on the New York Islanders? Um, Anders Lee. Yep. And, oh gosh, Brock Nelson. You got it, nice work, nice work. And which former Mr. Hockey award winner currently plays for the Iowa Wild? Uh, Sammy Walker. You got it. Good work. Now, you'll be the trivia answer if we ever get another Providence, right? 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 Gotcha. Okay. Now we get to some goaltenders here. Mr. Bauer from Minnetonka, Hunter Bauer. Okay. Name the only Frank Brimzik Award winter, winner from Minnetonka. Do you know that one? Uh, Charlie Glockner. Yeah, nice work. 2019. And which Minnetonka Mr. Hockey Award finalist had the longest NHL career in your estimation? Uh, Gardner. Yep, Jake Gardner. Yep, awesome. Good job. All right, Cam. Cam Hendrickson, Chan Hassan. Once again, congrats on the first ever Frank Brimzik Award. So you get extra credit questions too. Which Chan Hassan graduate is the starting center for the NFL Detroit Lions? Who? 
Frank Grendel. Frank Ragno, you Ragno. got it, yeah. And another, another assist from down the table, yeah. Now here's a really trick question. You might know this, which two Chan Hassan lacrosse players last year swept the Mr. Lacrosse Award and the Lacrosse Goaltender of the Year Award? Do you know those guys? No idea. No idea, okay. No. I wouldn't expect you to. Carter Van Holland and Grant Pettinen. Unless you were friends with them, you would know that. Yeah. But nice job. Thank Pass you. that mic down. Okay, AJ from Proctor. There have been two Mr. Hockey Award finalists from Proctor over the years. Do you know even one of those? Uh, Slangren, one of them? Yep. Yeah. Aaron in 2000? I don't know the other one. Jay Dardis in 99. Yeah. Yep, Dardis. Okay. An extra credit question for you, since you're new, relatively new to, to the Mr. Hockey. Name the first ever Ms. Hockey Award winner. Ooh. <laughs> um, how long ago was it? 1996. Oh, I don't and know. And she's in attendance today, I believe. Yeah, I'm not sure. Winnie Broad. Winnie, oh, are you here? Okay. Can you stand up? <laughs> Thank you for being here. That was extra credit, nice yeah, job. I'll take that mic, I think we're done with trivia. Okay, What's, do you, are you back up here, Katie? <laughs> there you go, thank you. Wow, great trivia, good work, good work. We're gonna be done with quizzing you guys on a bunch of questions, but great work on all of that, that was fun. Well, next up, to continue the ceremony, I would like to introduce Dustin Vogelgesang from the Minnesota High School Coaches Association. Um, he's going to announce the coaches of the year. He currently is the president of the Minnesota High School Association and serves as a current coach of East Ridge. Thank you. On behalf of the Minnesota Hockey Coaches Association and the 156 schools, the head coaches, assistant coaches, I'd like to welcome everybody to this year's Mr. Hockey Banquet. I'd also like to thank those players that are up here uh, who chose to come back and play for their senior year. Play for their communities, play for their family, their school, and most importantly, their friends. It's a big deal for our best players in high school to be playing in our league. And on behalf of the Minnesota Hockey Coaches Association, I want to thank all you guys. I'm here to announce the John Mayer Uchi Award for Class A and AA Coach of the Year. But before that, I want to read you a quote from Kirby Smart. Some of you guys that were in the AA banquet heard this already, so you're gonna, it's going to be double time. But um, this quote from Kirby Smart. He's the head coach at Georgia University regarding leadership. And I think it fits perfectly with these two winners and the rest of our coaches across the state. Kirby Smart said, I think anyone can tell you the benefits of great leaders. Anybody can tell you what it looks like. They can tell you what leadership can do for you. They can tell you how to develop leadership. There are tons of books written on great leaders and leadership. But you won't see, and what you will never see, is people talk about the costs of leadership. Associated with leadership, I should say. If we truly want to be honest and upfront about leadership, you can't ignore the costs of leadership. Great leaders will accept these costs. Number one, you will have to make hard decisions that negatively affect people you care about. Number two, you will be disliked despite your best attempts to do the best for most. And number three, you will be misunderstood and won't always have the opportunity to defend yourself. Players, parents, administrators, just please know that our coaches love your kids. We want to give them everything they're dreaming of. We spend hours at the rink before and after practice and games, away from our families to coach yours. We will make mistakes. Everybody does, nobody's perfect. But know it comes from a place of love and trying to figure out what to do best for the most. Class A Head Coach of the Year is Michael Weiss from Marshall High School. Michael has dedicated his time and efforts to growing the game of hockey in Marshall, Minnesota for the last 13 years. After graduating from Moorhead High School in 2007, 
He played hockey at Concordia College. He started his coaching career as an assistant at Moorhead in 2011, then moved to Marshall and became an assistant coach for the Tigers in 2012, 12, before stepping in as head coach in 2013. Since his time at Marshall, the Tigers have made one state tournament appearance and three section finals. Michael has dedicated his time and efforts to the sport of hockey in Marshall from running off ice summer camps when they didn't even have summer ice to now running on ice summer camps for all ages. Michael is such a great asset to the community of Marshall and their hockey program. Once again, congratulations, Michael. Our class AA head coach of the year is Rich Many from Centennial High School. <laughs> coach Many epitomizes what a high school coach should be. Hardworking, humble, loyal, and classy. Rich works tirelessly for his players and for the entire Centennial hockey community. After graduating from Centennial in 1990, Rich quickly became involved in the Youth Hockey Association where he coached numerous youth teams prior to taking over the high school program in 2011-2012. During Many's tenure, the Cougars have reached four state tournaments to go along with another three appearances in section finals. Quick to deflect praise and even quicker to promote his assistance and champion to his players, Rich remains an excellent leader, mentor, and role model to his players, coaches, and the entire Centennial hockey community. Congratulations to these two outstanding coaches, well-deserved, and thank you to the Mr. Hockey Committee for allowing us to showcase these two coaches on your stage. Congratulations again to the coaches of the year. Yes. Next, I would like to introduce Wayne Peterson from The Wild. Um, actually, are we doing Wayne next? Yes, Wayne Peterson from The Wild. I just had to regroup here. Um, yeah, welcome up, Wayne Peterson. Thank you. Gosh, here we go. He's the Director of Community Relations and Hockey Partnerships for the Wild, responsible for all the team's high school and youth hockey programming, including the Little Wild Learn to Play program, Learn to Skate, Youth Hockey Referee Clinics, and Seminar Leadership Summit, Girls Hockey Weekend, Hockey Day Minnesota, everything. Once again, Wayne Peterson. Thank you. Thank you. Speaking about Hockey Day Minnesota, where's the world contingency? Hey, great job this year uh, hosting Hockey Day up in War Road. Uh, Shakopee next year has got uh, their tough act to follow, so thank you for everything you did for hosting Hockey Day in Minnesota. So uh, on behalf of the Minnesota Wild, uh, welcome to our campus. And today is Mr. Hockey Banquet presented by the Minnesota All Sports Alliance. The Minnesota Wild have two missions. Our first, of course, is to win the Stanley Cup. We're still working on that one, but I have faith. And our second is to create a greater state of hockey. And we can't think of a better way to create a greater state of hockey than by supporting high school hockey. And we do that in a number of ways, including sponsoring the Mr. and Ms. Hockey Banquets, the Boys and Girls State Hockey Tournament Banquets, the Boys and Girls State Hockey Tournaments, the Annual Leadership Summit, and many other ways. I would like to congratulate the four state champions, including the two girls champions, Warroad and Edina, and the two boys champions, St. Cloud Cathedral and Edina again. And note that the boys tournament set an all-time attendance record this past weekend with a total attendance of 104,442, including over 20,000 people who witnessed last night's classic game between Edina and Shanhassen, how about that? <laughs> Last night's game was an instant classic and it was a fitting end to Lou Nanny's 60 years of broadcasting the State High School Hockey Tournament. That was a very special moment, both early in the game and late in the game when we paid tribute to Lou. 
and I think he's getting paid tribute at our game this afternoon. Congratulations to all the nominees to my right for your incredible seasons. And congratulations to everybody in the audience uh, in attendance today. Without the love and support from their parents, coaches, and teammates, it's quite possible that none of these guys would be sitting up here today. You all played a huge role in their development, both as hockey players and as young men. And I would also like to echo what Dustin said earlier and thank all of the nominees. I'm sure many of you had opportunities to play elsewhere. But as Dustin said, you chose to stay home. You chose to represent your community. You chose to represent your high school. And you chose to play with your high school buddies, many of whom will be your friends for life. It's players like you who make Minnesota hockey so special. And it's players like you who make Minnesota the state of hockey. A colleague of mine from Arizona, he's only been with us for less than a year, he wanted to wit witness the Minnesota Hockey Tournament live for the first time. After the game, all he could say was amazing. And he went on to say what an honor it is to work in a hockey market like Minnesota. And thanks to all you guys up here for making hockey so special in Minnesota. And finally, the Wild will be extending an invitation to our winners, two winners this afternoon, to attend the Minnesota Wild game on Thursday night. As is tradition, the two of you, assuming you are able to accept the invitation, will be invited to make the Let's Play Hockey call right before puck drop. I'll be sure to talk with the winners and your parents afterwards to talk logistics. And in case you don't get enough hockey at the hockey banquet today, we have a game in about an hour. And I bet there might be a couple tickets. So, you know, if you want to find your way down about, you know, next door to the XL Center, we'd love to have you for a big game against Nashville. So again, we are so proud to support this great tradition. Congratulations to all you guys. Good luck in the future and, and good luck with the announcement coming up. Now I'd like to welcome Marty Mielli. Marty is the chairman for the Mr. Hockey Award. We shouted him out earlier. He's a huge help in making this event possible. He's been a member of the Minnesota All Sports Alliance since 2012, and with Marty, of course, Mark Parrish. Needs little to no introduction, but Mark and Marty will now take over. Thank you, Katie. On behalf of the Minnesota Sports All Alliance, uh, we wanted to create an award to recognize the people that make hockey in our area strong. Pillars would be an appropriate term. Many of us at this table, out in the crowd, or the future class of 2024 have or will experience hockey at many different levels across the country and even the world. But nothing compares or holds a special place like hockey in our backyard, and that is mainly due to the people who help grow our game. We wanted to create a prestigious award that goes to an influential leader who over a period of many years has been dedicated to the growth and development of hockey in Minnesota. This year's winner exemplifies everything in that definition. Uh, I was uh, giddy to say the least uh, when I was asked to give this award to the recipient this year because the only thing greater than his skills on the pickleball, pickleball court is his humility. He's an incredibly humble man. I think of him, I think, I think of this man as character, dig, dignity, classy. And we won't hold it against him that he was born in Michigan. He's been a lifer in Minnesota since about eight years old. And he has been with the Minnesota Wild since 1997. For those of you who do the math, they started in 2000. He was literally from the beginning of the Minnesota Wild. He started out as a marketing guru. He made his way up. And he's made his way all the way to the CEO of the Minnesota Wild. And when I looked up some of the things he was behind, uh, there was no way I was writing all of that down, nor I was going to announce them all because it would take forever. It's literally everything that the Minnesota Wild does, from the dynamites, you name it, this guy is behind it. He is an incredible man. And I'm so honored to give this year's recipient of the Mr. Hockey Ambassador Award to my friend, Matt Maka.
Thank you. My God, that was, uh, that was kind. That was uh, a bit much. Uh, the best advice I've ever gotten about giving a speech is to be sincere, uh, be brief, and be seated. So I'm going to try to follow that advice here today. First of all, I want to congratulate um, all the teams that made the tourney this year and the champions, of course, all of you here to my right uh, who, uh, you know, you, you should feel special. I know you do, and uh, it's quite an achievement just to be sitting at this table no matter who the two winners turn out to be here today. But congratulations. Um, as for this award, uh, I want to thank the Minnesota Sports, uh, All Sports Alliance, the folks here. So many of them are good friends to me. And I'm um, still kind of surprised that this happened. I'm waiting for, like, you remember when the Oscars, actually it's the Oscars tonight, right? And um, if you're a movie buff, you might remember, recall that a couple of years ago, they actually screwed up the, the award and they, they gave it first to La La Land and then they had to pull it back and give it to Moonlight. I'm kind of waiting for somebody to pull this back to your friends. No, Matt, you're, you're, we all screwed up here. We, it's not for you. But anyway, um, no, seriously, I, I do want to thank you sincerely. This is uh, surprising to me. Uh, the, um, the thing is that any good that I've done uh, through my time at the Wild here has come as a result of the Wild, and especially, I'm going to say, our two owners, Bob Nagley and Craig Leopold, who have supported all of our efforts at the Wild from day one. They have given us the resource and, and the license to go out and do good in the community, and I, I really want to thank them as well as all my teammates at the Wild, and Wayne Peterson was just up here, Wayne, Rachel Schultz, uh, who runs our foundation, and really all of the folks at the Wild. We have a, a special opportunity, I think, to a platform, if you will, to do good, and, um, and, and that comes from our association with the Wild, and I feel that way about myself as well. The last thing I'll say is, uh, you know, we've talked a lot about state of hockey here, and Wayne just made some very accurate comments about how special this is, what we've all created here at the State of Hockey. We all created that, right? And it's, uh, it, it, it existed generations before the Wild, even though the Wild put the words together, the State of Hockey. Um, it, 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 is, uh, it, it happens nowhere else in the United States. Um, there's no high school tournament that's even close. And our rightful place is calling ourselves the State of Hockey is not marketing mumbo jumbo, it's true. We, have, we produce the most NHL players, the most college players. We have more rinks. I think we have 225 rinks. I think the next closest state in the union has about 100 and some odd rinks. I think it's New York. Um, on any measure, we are the state of hockey, but it is something to be preserved and celebrated and to, um, to continue. And, and so for you guys, uh, th those of you players here and coaches uh, and parents, uh, Paying it forward is a really important part of your future, I think, and I hope, and I, I was impressed with how many of you knew so many of the trivia questions. That, that shows the respect you have for the game, and I hope you'll continue that in years to come. Congratulations to you all, and thank you very much. We have another award to announce. Uh, now, on behalf of Let's Play Hockey, Marty will be presenting the Reed Larson Award for the top defenseman. Top defenseman in the state, Minnetonka, John Stout. All right, before we announce the recipient of this year's Frank Brimzik Award now, we'd like to welcome Frank Brimzik's grandson to the stage, Jim Harrington. Please come on up, Jim. And with Jim, we will also have Matt Lundeen join the Apple Valley Frank Brimzik Award winner back in 2004 to announce our winner.
Thank you. They asked me to keep it short and sweet, and I will. So my grandfather was born in Eveleth. When he finished high school, he ended up at St. Cloud Teachers College. He finished there and moved east. He excelled in the minor leagues until he was called up. He was called up because a great goalie by the name of Tiny Thompson got injured. He was a fan favorite. Through my research, I found out something that surprised me. Hockey fans, when displeased, let you know. <laughs> He's out on the ice, no mask, getting railed on. So what did he do? Six shutouts in seven games. He earned the name Mr. Zero. In a few short years, he had two Stanley Cups, two Vizinas, and a Caldier. He went off into World War II, came back, and finished his career in the Blackhawks. After that, he moved to Virginia, Minnesota, cabin on Lake Vermilion, until he passed away. And talk about state of hockey. In 1939, there were six teams. Three of them had goalies from Eveleth. So, like I said, they asked me to keep it short and sweet. Congratulations, gentlemen, and good luck. Thank you. Uh, this year's Frank Frimsick Award winner is top envelope. Goalie from Chanhassen, Cam Hendrickson. I don't really compare it to the six shutouts and going to World War II and living on a lake, but that was pretty cool. But, I mean, respect to these boys, AJ and Hunter. They're really good at their job and they'll have a bright future. But thanks to all the boys, thanks to my teammates, thanks to all the coaches that got me here, and I'll remember this forever, so thank you. Congrats, Cam Hendrickson. Now we'll get close to our next big award, of course. I'd like to welcome the 1985 Mr. Hockey Award winner to the stage, which is Tom Chorsky. He was the first Mr. Hockey winner in 85 from Minneapolis Southwest, played for seven NHL teams, including the New Jersey Devils, where he won the cup in 1995. Welcome, Tom Chorsky. Thanks, Katie. I will also be brief to keep things moving along. Um, thank you everyone for, for coming today. I know it's a long weekend for everyone and probably started this thing with a banquet, having been there, a banquet on Tuesday night maybe. So uh, those of you that were in the tournament anyway, um, congratulations to you guys, all the boys here and all three goalies. Um, you know, the only thing I'll mention about me winning, which it's pointed out was 40 years ago, a long time ago, but uh, I was lucky to have Herb Brooks be the presenter, which was pretty cool for me at the time. He was five years removed from winning the gold medal and that miracle on ice. Um, John Mariucci was at the table, which was another pretty special thing for me. So, and and, a, and a, a goalie named Larry Ross, I think, from International Falls. So I've got somewhere I've got a picture with those guys and and me winning the uh, winning the award. Um, Congratulations to the uh, Edina Hornets and, uh, and, and the runners-up Chan Hassan and to St. Cloud Cathedral and to Hermantown and to all the teams you know, that made the tournament. It's a testament to 
the work they did this year and the, and the, and the, everything's been said about the boys that stick around and come back and play. And, and one thing I also will add is that when you get to do the TV um, broadcast, we get to sit in on a Zoom call with all the coaches from both classes. And we get to ask them questions. And Lou Nanny's on the call, it's, which is special just in itself. And he asks questions. And we get to hear from the coaches uh, about how their season went and the ups and the downs and turning points and, you know, who's the, who's the glue guy in the room and who's the smartest kid and who's the multi-sport athlete and, I mean, on and on and on. And so getting to be a part of this event um, is, is really special. And, you know, here I am 40 years later and, and just being a part of the hockey community um, and getting to, you know, continue being part of the sport. It's a wonderful sport. And these guys will learn as they go on that, you know, the award maybe today doesn't mean as much as an individual award and the, and the finalists uh, who don't win. But down the road, when you guys are, are old like me, you'll, you'll look back and appreciate it. And I want to thank Massa as well for, I don't do a lot of the work here behind, they do, all these guys do um, all the work and uh, I thank them for that. And uh, with that, let's, uh, let's bring up Marty Sertich. Uh, was mentioned earlier, he's one of the guys that won the award and won the Hobie Baker Award. So Marty, come on up. And he's currently, a, currently an assistant coach at St. Thomas, I think on the women's side. So he's still in the game. Congrats, guys, on fantastic senior seasons. All right, on behalf of the Minnesota All Sports Alliance and the Mr. Hockey Awards Banquet Committee, I'm pleased to announce that the winner of the 2024 Mr. Hockey Award is Hagen Burroughs of Minnetonka High School. Um, first and foremost, I just want to say a huge thank you to my parents. Um, nothing is possible without the time and effort and money you've put into me these past 12, 12 years. Um, and then secondly, this reward, um, while it may be considered individual, is a reflection of um, our group that we have at Minnetonka and the uh, special connections and relationships we have there. We uh, didn't quite get, get to where we wanted to this year, but um, that group of guys is, is some, a group of people I'm going to remember for the rest of my life. Um, without them, nothing that I've been able to accomplish would be possible. Um, and on top of that, our coaching staff is second to none. And, and I really want to thank you guys for all the time and effort you've put into me and all of us. And then finally, I've got to give a shout out to uh, Javon and, and Gavin Gary, who unfortunately isn't here. Um, I've been with those two guys the past three years, and um, they're just as much a part of my process as myself. So a huge thank you to those guys and, and everybody who's supported me these past few years. Thank you. One more time for Cam Hendrickson, Hagen Burroughs, and all of these boys up here. Congratulations and good luck in all of your future endeavors with hockey. This was fun to get to know all of you guys today. Fun to be with all of you guys and celebrate these players. And uh, for now, I'll send it back over to Lauren. Thank you, Katie. 
Thank you, all you all you folks over on this side that helped us with this banquet. Congratulations to all you guys again. You're all winners in our minds, and we invite you back to any Mr. Hockey banquet in the future you can ever make it to. Please be our guest. And a special thanks and congratulations to all you coaches and teammates and parents and friends and everyone that that supported these guys and supported this banquet. We very much appreciate it. We appreciate you being here. When uh, After we conclude the banquet, we'll have you guys bring your awards over to that photo table. Steve will take a couple photos, and then we'll give parents and families two or three or four minutes to take some photos of the group. And then we'll get all you guys, all of our alumni, if for a group photo as well. And maybe you guys can get to know each other a little bit during that time. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here. And uh, the Minnesota All Sports Alliance thanks you, appreciate your support, and we'll see you next year at the Mr. Hockey Awards next year. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>